Andrew and I met because I sang in the Austin Jazz Orchestra and he played saxophone and he took a very long time to actually ask me out though. That was in July and we had our first date in November. Um, we got engaged in 2011 in Paris, which is very romantic, and then we got married in 2012 in June and um, then we lived very happily for a couple of years, enjoyed quiet married life until we had a baby in 2016. We had a little boy called Joel um, who's delightful. Uh, but it did change things a little bit and uh, yeah we, we got a house in East Belfast. Andrew was a musician so he he taught saxophone and clarinet and then he played at lots of things and then I am a singer so we did an awful lot of stuff together. We sang at yeah many many weddings and he was absolutely insistent we got a piano for um for a wedding present so that was his main thing that he wanted so andrew used to sit and play the piano and i used to sing and we would do it for hours upon hours and we always had very patient neighbors who who put up with us and then he would have done that a lot with joel as well and joel very very early learned to sing you know his ABCs and Zoom 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 were going to the moon and stuff and Andrew would sit down and play for him so it was really lovely, yeah. He was always polite, he was always patient, very kind and he really would have done anything for you. Um, yeah, he was kind of an all-round really nice guy. So um, he was diagnosed in December 2017 pretty much out of the blue with a glioblastoma which is a brain tumour. Uh, it was about the size of a tennis ball and yeah life definitely changed at that point. They they suspected he would live about a year. He lived closer to two, it was just shy of two and he was incredibly gracious the whole way through. He just sort of said well if I die well that's God's plan it'll be much worse for you, it'll be much worse for my parents, I'll be in heaven and there's not there's nowhere better than that so don't worry about me and he really had that attitude the whole way through. I mean, he definitely complained more about having a cold than he ever did about having a brain tumour, which was a bit weird. Grief is a very strange thing. It's very up and down. People talk about it being like a roller coaster, and that is, that is the best way to describe it. There are moments of highs where you have this intense gratitude for what I have. I've got two beautiful sons, one of whom they told me that I wouldn't have, that we wouldn't have. Uh, called Freddie, so I've got Joel and Freddie and I have this intense gratitude for the fact that I had that time with Andrew, that I got to meet him, that I got to be married, that I got to have my children and then there are moments when you you pretty much feel like in the depths of despair, just the, the saddest you can possibly imagine. Now at 31 I know that there's a high chance I will be here for quite a long time, hopefully, we'll see and so it's kind of dealing with the grief here and now and there's a couple of things I would say that help me with that. One, it isn't really anything to do with Christianity, it's that I know that Andrew would have wanted me to and uh, he would have said, you know, come on, get up, keep on singing, keep going, you know, and the thought of me being sad he would have hated and sometimes just knowing that is, is, a, is a big thing. Two, I do actually think about how Andrew dealt with it and the fact that he just he put his trust in God, he put his trust that God would guide his path and sometimes if I've had a really really hard day and I've spent the whole day crying, which some days I do, to have a little moment to be able to just go, okay God, I can't deal with this right now, I just need this to be in your hands and that's really helpful um, just to realise you're not in control and you have to you have to just give it over to God. Andrew liked Psalm 46. He used to remember that while he was doing his radiotherapy and that's the that's the psalm that says to be still. I like Psalm 121 as well. That was at Andrew's funeral. The, I lift my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. It's never going to be perfect here, but because of Jesus, eventually it will be. I lift my eyes to the hills. I kind of I look up to heaven and think one day I'll get there and one day it will be perfect again.